Unlike my previous tutorial videos which explain how coaxial wires are used for the impedance matching of FPV antennas array, using microstrip lines on PCB will require a computer and a couple of software, which you will find the download links in the video description below. First, let us look at a typical PCB design for a quadruple antenna array. From this feed point, where a transmitter is connected, we see a standard 50 ohms microstrip line being fed to a T joint, which splits it into two transmission lines. The current will be half for each diverging line, resulting in an impedance of 100 ohms each. It then reaches a quarter wave transformer, which basically is a microstrip section of a calculated length and width. More about that later. This transformer transforms the 100 ohms back to 50 ohms, which is then fed to another T joint here. Well, it's the same story for this T joint, so we arrive back at 100 ohms, and the 100 ohms is then fed into the micro street patch antenna. It's worth mentioning here that the high impedance is due to the feeding of the feed point directly to the patch at its edge. In the case of a single patch antenna, the proper positioning of the feed point needs to be calculated and it must be within the rectangle microstrip area in order to achieve the 50 ohms impedance as shown here. For this project, we shall have four female SMA connectors instead of these four rectangle patches. And each SMA connector needs to be matched to 50 ohms. To do that, we could add a quarter wave transformer, just like here. This is to transform these 100 ohms back to 50 ohms for our SMA connector. The end result will look something like this. And now we have a total of 6 quarter wave transformers and 4 SMA, which are perfectly matched to 50 ohms each. Now that the impedance matching network is correct, we need to calculate the dimensions of the quarter wave transformer basically the length and the width. And also we need to calculate the width of the 100 ohms line as well as the width of the 50 ohms line. I'll show you a method to do this, but first we have to go to the web. Use the micro street calculator here. I'm going to use FR4, so the permittivity is basically 4.4 on the data sheet. The relative permittivity is going to shift up and down depending on the frequency for FR4. So basically, we need to look at some reference material. Here I have the reference material uh, taken from published white papers. So at 5.8 GHz, you can see that the measured permittivity is 3.33. And this is the measured permittivity. So to arrive at 3.33, I keep changing the value here from 4.4. Sorry, I realized a mistake here. The copper thickness should be 1.37 mil. And the thickness of the board without the copper material is 60.25 mil. This is the tangent loss, which is 0.04 because FR4 has high loss. And this is the conductivity of copper, which is one. So if we have 4.4 dielectric value and we analyze that, the measured permittivity is actually 3.258. We want to arrive at 3.3. So let's change the value back at 4.22 is um, 3.136. Um, oh, wait a minute, because the white papers is published for a 50 ohms feed line. So we need to change the Z O to 50 ohms. Do a synthesize. Analyze. There we go. So at 4.22, we have 3.33. That's pretty close and happy with that. So I'm going to lock the dielectric value or the relative permittivity at 4.22. At this point, we know that the width for 50 ohms fit line will be 119.65 mm. Going back to the dimensions here. Now that we know this width for the 50 ohms line, let's find out the width for the 100 ohms line. So here, let's change the value to 100 ohms and do a synthesize. And here we go, it's 26.88 mils for the width of the 100 ohms line. 
And lastly, for the most important quarter wave transformer, we need to know the length and the width. So let's do that again with a calculator. Let's change the ohms to 70.7 ohms. If you remember, that's the calculated impedance required for the quarter wave transformer. And a quarter wave is basically 90 degrees of the sine wave. And let's do a synthesize. And here we have 62.899. Basically, these are the dimensions for each quarter wave transformer. This is the length and the width. I'll show you a few screenshots of the calculated values. So for the 50 ohms feed line, with the dielectric lock at 4.22, we have uh, arrived at 3.04 mm for the width of the feed line for 50 ohms. And for 100 ohms, we arrive at 0 0.68 millimeters. And for the quarter wave transformer, the width is actually 1.59 millimeters, and the length of the quarter wave is 7.29 mm on the FR4. So I'm going to use all these dimensions to draw the micro strip. And basically, what you need to take note of is when you create a new canvas, you want to make sure that the um, resolution is set to 300 pixels per cm. Anyway, let me show you the drawings I come up with. Do remember to set the resolution to 300 um, pixels per centimeters. That is important. All right, this is the actual canvas and. I started off by drawing the traces and I used the calculations that we have done earlier. These are the exact dimensions. And then I move on to draw the solder mass. So this will basically prevent any soldering. And the red are the copper trace which you could solder the signal pin of the SMA connector. Then I proceed to draw the bottom side of the PCB board which is a complete rectangle of copper that will be our ground plane and then again I draw the mask for the bottom the next step is to resize this so I'm going to go to image size first of all I need to change the um, pixels per centimeter I started off 300 so that I could have uh, as high as a uh, resolution as possible but I realized that the software which I'm going to use to process the drawings for the PCB could not handle such a high resolution. So I have to reduce it to 170. I also figured out that I need to set the percentage to 58.8% so that the drawings would match the actual dimensions in real life. Okay, and then we could save. After saving the Photoshop project as a PSD file, I then open each layer one by one and save them to JPEG files each. So there are five JPEG files as you can see here. Now we're going to convert each layer from these images to Gerber files so that we can make the PCB. To do that, we're going to use a freeware called the image to Gerber. This is the program which I have downloaded. Let me open that up. Alright, maybe another time I will donate. Alright, the first thing you got to do is to set the tolerance to 140. This is the best value after much trial and error. And then the next thing you need to do is to load the image. Now I'm going to load the top copper layer. To find out the color codes, I can use this button here. Click on it and then I can use the cursor to find out the values. In this case, it's 185, 38, and 18. So I'm going to enter that in. Once you have done that, you can update the previews and it will give a more accurate representation. Remember to tick the checkbox and then hit export to Gerbers. I'm going to save it to this folder and you should see a file appear here see here there's this file called color2 and it's because we have exported color number 2 which is this one here 
and I'm going to go ahead and rename it to something meaningful so I'm going to call it top copper layer so you get the idea now we're going to do the same steps for the rest of these files here and then we will have a bunch of Gerber files alright to save time I've already converted the rest of the JPEG files to Gerber as you can see here there are five of them and they are all stored in this folder called PCB Gerbers. Now before we can send it to the factory for fabrication, we need to prepare these files. To do that, we have another freeware called the Gerber Viewer. Now in this Gerber Viewer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the layer. So I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to navigate to the PCB Gerbers and load the first layer, top copper layer. Alright, it's loaded and you can see the copper layer trace and also a bunch of errors which we are going to ignore. What we need to do is to go back to layers and then right click and then edit layer. You're going to scale it to the dimensions in real life that will be 0.1. Do that for both axes and apply to the selected. And then you can view it by setting best fit. And now the next step is to export it. We're going to export it to a standard RS274X Gerber. I'm going to create a new folder and call this for battery. And I'm going to save it. But before we save, we have to give it a name that the factory understands. So for the top copper layer, even a certain extension naming convention, file name can be anything meaningful such as top copper layer but most importantly the extension has to be GTL which stands for top copper layer well, basically I'm going to do the same for the rest except for the outline layer which is different for the outline layer you have to do it differently first I open the outline GBR file Again, you get a bunch of errors and again, I'm going to scale it to 0.1 for both axes. Apply to selected again. Now, the most important thing here is when we export the outline, do not select the Gerber format, select the Excellent Drill. This is important because if you select the wrong format, the factory will not be able to accept your file. So I'm going to call this outline. Again, the naming convention is important and the factory recognized the outline as GKO. So I'm going to save it to the same folder for factory. Alright, I've done the same to the other four files and basically they are all here. You need to take note of the extension because they are required to be of these extensions for the factory to be able to fabricate your board. For the bottom copper layer is GBL and B stands for bottom and um, bottom solder mask is um, GBS so the difference is with the S and L and the outline will be .gko for the top layer is uh, GTL, T for top and top solder mask will be GTS so I guess the S stands for solder so now we need to do is to zip it up to become a single zip file and then we can upload this zip file to a website for fabrication here I'm going to JLC PCB this video is not sponsored by them but I have used the service before and I'm familiar with their platform so I'm using this as an example first step I will do is to add your Gerber file and I will select the zip file here and now it's uploading and it says detected 2 layer board of 67 by 240mm and it looks pretty good I'm going to go to the close up view which is the Gerber viewer and here you could disable the solder mask layer to see how it looks like and you could go to the bottom view and I can disable the solder mask and then I will see the whole piece of copper 
Now let's take a look at the analysis results. Everything looks okay and this exclamation mark here is actually a good sign. It states that it has detected a drill layer. A lot of people have failed to upload the files which they created from Eager or some other PCB software because of the outline layer. Basically it's not the correct format. If it's not the drill layer and if it's the gerbil layer like the rest of the files, the fabrication company will not be able to detect dimensions of the board here and you won't be able to get them to fabricate your PCB. This is the price of um, 10 pieces I believe. Let's change it to 5 and it's about 13 USD which is not too bad. So basically that's how you fabricate your own 5.8 GHz 4-way splitter for FPV antennas. I hope you like this video and thank you for watching. See you again.